Well, I, I must uh, say I've never had an introduction like that, so thank you very much, Ronnie. Um, so we go from uh, asteroids to the very smallest of objects, and I want to talk to you uh, today about a discovery which was only recently announced. And uh, the press picks it up as the God particle, and I will talk about the God particle as, as the uh, uh, talk progresses. Um, so we scientists have a much duller name for it, the Higgs boson, um, but uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes from there. Um, this is part of a, um, well, a decades-long search for the understanding of what we're made of at the lowest, at the, at, the, at the most fundamental level. We know we're made of molecules, the molecules are made of atoms, the atoms have a nucleus with an electron cloud, and the nucleus is made of nucleons, and now we know that the nucleons are made of quarks. That's the field that we're talking about here, trying to understand what we're made of at the, at the smallest, smallest scale. And the tools that we're using um, consist of the uh, so-called accelerators, particle accelerators. And Spock had those as well. Um, this is, uh, the, and this is the latest in uh, uh, many, in a, in a series of, of such machines. This is the latest, greatest, most powerful machine called the Large Hadron Collider in, in Geneva. Um, just, just outside of Geneva on the Swiss, uh, Franco-Swiss border. The, uh, I don't have a, do I have a? There's a, uh, that, that's a, a, a um, this, this Geneva airport there, and at the back is uh, Mont Blanc. Uh, if, uh, if you know the area, it's a beautiful part of the, of the, of the, uh, the world. But the, this 27 kilometer ring is 100 meters underground, and it's stuffed full of, um, of magnets. If I look a bit more, more carefully, these, these magnets uh, cause the, uh, par a particle beam to stay in a circle. And, and uh, to circulate around the ring where the energy is picked up by an electric field, electromagnetic field, and they get to, to give them more and more energy. So why are we, why are we producing these um, high energy particles? Well, the, it started back in the early part of last century, my century, not yours, um, um, when we were, were trying to understand what the, the nucleus of matter was made of. And, um, we need to go to high energies because high energies correspond to very, very small wavelengths. Of, and and we, when, when, the, when we're trying to look at something which is less than the wavelength of the light we're looking at it with, it becomes fuzzy. And to get to a very smaller scale, we go to higher energies so that the wavelength gets shorter. So we go to x-rays instead of visible light. We go to electron uh, microscopes to get to very small, um, small scale so we can understand stuff, matter, at the, at the smallest scale. And this is just an evolution of that, in a pretty big evolution, 27 kilometers around. Um, uh, but that's, that's where we're at today in understanding, the, the, in, in, in probing the smallest particles of matter. And, uh, but there's a very famous uh, uh, equation in physics, which you've all heard of, which is E equals mc squared. Energy and mass have a relationship with this Einstein relation. So as we got to very high energy, the, some of that energy now can be uh, converted into mass. So we, in trying to look at the smallest particle, the structure of matter at the smallest scale, we actually started to generate particles. And after the war, the Second World War, not my war, my father's war, <laughs> uh, the accelerators, accelerators took off because of various technologies um, that were used for radar and so forth. And in the, in the early 60s and um, late 50s, early 60s, this E equals mc squared ending, ending up, ended up generating lots and lots of particles. So go, from going from a tri this simplistic idea of, of uh, uh, look, getting to finer and finer scales, we started creating stuff. And wh where, where was all that coming from? And uh, an old cartoon with the cyclotron, particles, particles, were swept them away. There were hundreds of particles being created. We were trying to find a, uh, my field was trying to find a simple understanding of the nature of matter and what were, we, were, we were ending up creating particles and making things look more and more complex. Well physics um, is, um, uh, makes very strong use of symmetries and mathematical symmetries help, have helped physicists understand the nature of matter for, for many, many decades. And with all of these particles, in fact, we found patterns and the patterns then uh, could be used to come down to a very simple model, which again is a dull name with some interesting names in here. We call it the up and the down quark or quark. 
the strange quark and the charm quark, the top, top and bottom quark, good names, but this is called the standard model. <laughs> so that's a bit dull. We probably should have allowed some of the uh, arts majors to, to give us a better name. Um, all of the stuff of matter up until July was described with this block of, of, of particles. So what we have is um, along, there are three replicants, replications, replicas of these quarks, quarks, which make up the nucleus. And another couple of things was it once called a neutrino. And since I've been talking, hundreds and hundreds of millions of neutrinos have been passing through you, unnoticed, coming from the sun. They pass through because they don't interact, excuse me, they don't interact very much. And then the good old electron, for all the chemists in the room, uh, that's all you need to know about. This, uh, with, with accelerators, we've, we in fact found three generations of these things. They look very similar, but uh, experimentally the only difference is each one of those generations is heavier than the previous one. And when we create these particles made of these heavier quarks, they very quickly decay back into the stuff that we're made of. So this nice, gentle universe that we live in now, uh, 13 billion years from, from the beginning, is made up of just a very small number of, of, of particles. In quantum mechanics, we describe, in quantum field theory, we describe the interactions between particles by fields. And those fields can be described uh, in, in, in terms of the exchange of particles. And so the electric field, which holds, holds atoms together, is described by the interaction between the electrons and the protons by the exchange of these photons, these particles of light. And these other ones, the gluon holds, is, is the particle responsible for holding the quarks together inside the nucleus. And the Z and the W boson, they were dis the, uh, the discovered in, um, in the 80s at CERN. These are responsible for, uh, for um, radioactive decay and other things. So it was all a very nice picture, and it was based purely on a mathematical symmetry. Um, how they interact is, is, um, is uh, beautifully described. But there's one thing that the, the standard model had nothing to say about, and that was these things ha all have different masses. They're all different from zero, and, and they vary a lot across, the, across this table. The standard model was happy with zero mass particles. And in fact, if there was anything in our, in our nice model which, which uh, gives, gave these objects a mass to start with, it would break the symmetry and things would fall, fall apart. The standard model has been looked at in, in hundreds of different experiments since the late 60s. And every time, every experiment showed that it, it to be consistent with this, this simple picture. But it did not explain where the mass came from. And back in the early 60s, Higgs and a few other people said that, let's, let's have a look at this from a mathematical perspective. And let's, well, we've got lots of fields here. Let's introduce another field. It's a very special field, it's not a force carrier, it's a field which permeates the universe and it has certain special properties. With that field, we can keep the symmetry, but give all these particles their mass. So, uh, many moons later, and after uh, a lot of effort expended by thousands of people around the world, the Large Hadron Collider came into operation in 2008 to large fanfare and in fact um, there was all sorts of discussions about it being the end of the world not through asteroids but through uh, creating mini black holes which are somehow going to suck the earth into uh, into itself and, uh, and puff will, will disappear. Um, didn't happen in fact a week and a half later there was a massive uh, uh, accident and um, the machine was shut down for over a year so one week later one week and then another year to, to go. But back in um, uh, in 2009, it was operational from the, from the end of 2009, and now it's been operating beautifully. It's in this tunnel underground, um, and there are, are experiments around the place. The beams are, are counter-circulating, uh, counter and at various po uh, points around the beam, they come to collision. And we then con convert uh, energy into mass. These are the big experiments. The uh, one up here on, your, on the top left is the one that we've been part of in Australia now since um, its, its inception, even before its inception, talking about the technology. So back in 89, I started working on that, 1989. Um, and uh, there are two, two major experiments, uh, massive experiments that are looking for this, Hig uh, this um, uh, Higgs boson. And there are other experiments as well going on there. 
This is a famous photo from uh, five or six years ago to give you the size, the scale of, of um, the Atlas experiment. These uh, tube objects are massive magnets and this is a person. So to give you a scale, it's uh, six stories high and about 45 meters long. And the reason for having such a size is that we're all megalomaniacs and we needed a big size to be able to measure these particles accurately enough to determine whether we've found something. So what the, what, what the operation of these things is, is the, there are two beams in opposite directions, protons, that's the nucleus of a, of a hydrogen atom, a very intense set of bunches, uh, 1300 bunches of these things around this 27 kilometer ring. They're at, at the highest energy that we can possibly get them with the technology available to us and every 25 nanoseconds, 40, 40 million times a second, they cross inside these experiments and every now and again some of those protons bang into each other and when they bang into, into each other their energy is converted into the mass equivalent and we know very well that if the Higgs existed we have to look at 10 uh, trillion events before we find one which might be the Higgs boson. So 10 trillion events have to be recorded and sift, sifted through to find evidence of the one Higgs boson. That's why it was such a big deal for us uh, on July 4th when we were uh, well, ready to announce this. It is a very, very difficult task. The other thing about the energy available is that we know that the universe is, uh, originated from a hot big bang 14 million, 13 billion years ago. And it was very hot, it expanded, and as it expanded it's cooled down. The energy, um, just like in a hot gas, it means that the molecules are bouncing around at very high, high speed, cold gas is slowing down. The, the energy of the universe in the first billionth of a second, uh, sorry, first uh, billion, million billionth of a second is the energy that the, the Large Hadron Collider is, is creating. So it's, we're actually studying um, the universe at uh, 10 to the minus 10 seconds after the Big Bang. The other thing about these events is sometimes they're not neat and there are massive numbers of particles coming out. So the technology for, for extracting this one event in, a, in, in a 10 uh, trillion is very tricky and, very, and uh, this is part of the reason it's taken so long is to be able to operate in this kind of, an, of environment. The amount of data we collect is about uh, six, 6 million DVDs per year. So, and that gets analyzed in 350,000 processes that are scattered around the earth in various laboratories in what's called the grid. So it's a massive operation. Much simpler, and in fact, this is an example of one of these interactions which we extracted from the millions and millions and millions. And this is, this is one of the events which uh, is characteristic of what we expect from the Higgs boson. It looks quite simple. Um, this is where massive particles are being created and two photons, particles of light, very high energy particles of light have come out and um, they have been shown to originate from a, a massive particle which we, um, and we, when we find enough of these events um, that they are, they are beyond what, it, what is expected then, then we, we, we know that we've found something new and that was, was what happened in the, in the discovery of the Higgs boson. So we had to extract it from lots of um, hits and, par and uh, detected, detected hits right across the, uh, the experiment. It's not an easy task and we have to do this a hundred uh, trillion times to extract from the background what we're looking for. And so uh, determining the energy of these particles is essential and uh, then we can come down and we, we did find a significant excess and uh, it's not often that the, that, the, that the physics gets on the front page of the age. Uh, I think the front page of the, um, the Herald Sun that day was still talking about the footy, but the age <laughs> at least uh, had uh, the, the uh, origin of the universe revealed. Um, it's big, it's a big, t a big uh, call. It's not quite as uh, big as that, but it was, a good, it was a good headline. And the God particle, of course, the name the God particle is, um, is so intriguing but that's part of the reason I think that we got so much, uh, so much uh, media coverage. It happened at, that we were, had a conference here, the major conference of our field at, here in Melbourne, and so there was a link up between Melbourne and, and, uh, and Geneva, 
And in fact, the London Times had a photograph from here in Melbourne uh, with people cheering uh, at the announcement, so it was kind of fun. Very quickly, what is this Higgs thing and how does it work? This, about 10 years ago, the, the Times in, in London put out a competition and offered a bottle of champagne. We're, we're, we're pretty cheap, uh, cheap uh, performers, so we, a, a bottle of champagne for anybody who can explain the Higgs mechanism to a lay audience. And my friend uh, David Miller said, well, let's consider it like this. There's a party going on. People are milling around in the party, talking, drinking, uh, chewing the fat. And suddenly, we have a celebrity arrives in the door. And this celebrity is the particle which is being created by the symmetry. But as that particle starts to move through the crowd, the celebrity attracts the part of this Higgs field and, and, and makes it more difficult for it to move through the universe. It gets inertia through its celebrity status. And so this particle now has mass. So what's the Higgs boson? Again, this is this Higgs field which permeates the universe. And this guy is spreading a rumour. And he's giving a rumour to the first person in the room. And of course, rumours spread. And so this rumour, people are talking in the room, and, and the rumour passes through the room. That's the Higgs boson. It's an excitation of the field itself. And um, it has this particle property. So that's the Higgs mechanism. And the old picture of the standard model with all the different masses, all of those numbers correspond to, uh, now has been updated to uh, stuff of matter, the forces, and this guy here, the Higgs particle, which is a new part, which is new and, and indicates that there is such a thing as a Higgs field that, that permeates our universe and that just after the Big Bang gave mass to our particles. Leon Lederman is a, was a, um, um, a director of a major US laboratory for quite some time and he was, a real, he was a very funny man. He was writing a book about how difficult it was to find the Higgs boson. And uh, the working title was that goddamn particle. <laughs> but his publisher said this will never fly in, in, um, uh, in the Midwest Bible Belt in particular of the US. We'll just cut it down to the God particle. And I think it's because of the God particle that we've been able to um, build this accelerator, build these very, very big projects and get the, uh, the response from the press that we have. So where, do we, where from here? We've, we've established this, that this new particle exists. Um, we're, going, we, we're still taking a lot of data from the new machine, trying to enlarge our sample to see if it really is the standard model Higgs or something perhaps a little bit more exotic. Beyond that, we're going to be looking at um, to see if we can create uh, dark matter. Dark matter has been observed by astronomers, but we don't know what it is. So we can, tr we can try and create it in the laboratory to, to see what the dark matter particles are made of. And beyond that, we're looking for crazy things such as whether there is evidence for extra dimensions in space. Um, so there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a whole program ahead of us and the, the, the accelerator is going to be operating for the next 20 years at least with various upgrades along the way. So we're hoping for more discoveries after we've uh, really put the, the Higgs boson to bed. So that's all I wanted to say today.